Hey, it's your host with the most razor, aka Mr. Blast from the past, and I'm a time traveler from 1985. Well, Mitch, I want to love a synth wave, synth pop, rip style, vapor wave, and nothing but the best of nostalgia music. This week, we have a special guest on the show. We have Mr. Rob Kovacs, composer, pianist, singer, songwriter, specializing in video game music composing, form, well, also known as 88 bit. Uh, you performed at events like PAX West. Uh, GDC, MAGFest, which is pretty awesome. I've never been to any of those conventions, but I heard they're really awesome to go to and I want to go to someday. And you have a new album coming out. Well, by the time this interview comes out, this um, the new album will be already released called Void Compass, which we'll get into later on the show. How are you doing, Rob? Sorry for the long intro. How have you been doing, my friend? We were having some technical difficulties earlier, but I think we handled it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we're, I'm doing good. Glad we got these uh, video and audio things straightened out but yeah doing really good just trying to um stay afloat stay been really hectic trying to keep everything ready and get everything ready for the album coming out vinyl release the game coming out which i'm also a part of and then like regular life too so yeah i i definitely feel about that so tell me about um your video game composing so um it's it's something that i've definitely noticed about a lot of artists getting into recently like chip tune and music composing for certain video games and stuff like that um um you were a traditional more of a traditional piano player would you say about that um not, not i don't know about traditional piano player but my background has been uh i went to music school for classical music but i just always wanted to be a songwriter and rock star and performer so i've been in bands my whole life um and playing all kind of different styles, classical music, pop rock, jazz, musical theater, uh, contemporary classical, which I still, so I still dabble in a lot, a lot of all of that. Um, so never, never like a, a specific route, just always know that I love composing and creating and equally I love performing. Mm -hmm. Which I, which we'll get into in just a moment because that's definitely something I wanted to talk about. Um, what got you into the, the world of video game music, um, essentially like, synth wave and retro wave and stuff like that oh man so that's that can be a really long story so feel free to inter interject but um i got you know i grew up in video games and um loved loved the music but didn't really have too many other friends who really liked it and um in 2010 i made a, a piano arrangement of air man's theme for Mega Man 2 mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite games and like favorite soundtracks too and then I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to do like this whole game. And, but the music is just so hard. It's, it's like it's all made for computers. Just like play. the game. <laughs> just like the game. Yeah, the game is super hard. Um, but to play it on, you know, it's, it was written for computers to play. And, you know, some of the earliest examples of uh, mass consumed computer music uh, back in the mid 80s. And, uh, you know, composers didn't have to worry about humans playing it. They just wrote the notes and the computer mm -hmm. could do it. So, um, I had the idea of like I'll transcribe all this stuff for uh, piano, but it was it's very difficult. Um, eventually, I kind of shifted to like, well, maybe I'll do some other NES games, and then started the 88-bit um, project where I play 8-bit music on 88 keys, and that uh, kind of grew, it took off on its own. And I also got to study like lots of early video game music and dig into the sound files and see exactly what notes they're playing, and kind of got a sense of what these early composers. Uh, we're, th we're thinking of so and then I've discovered there's this whole like video game music community mm -hmm. that like loves video game music and covers it and performs it in all different genres and styles and transforms it into their own thing and it's like I didn't know this existed um, up until five years ago and I that I assume that's what got you into all the conventions like MAGFest and PAX West and all these other places because they have huge video game music shows and it's just like crazy to see like i know like i i think i was i've grown up with video games i love video games no matter what you know you see me wear my super nintendo hoodie so i'm just i'm a i'm a child of the 8-bit um 16-bit era so i completely understand um while digging into more stuff about you you seem to have two artist personalities i got a chance to listen to your last album um here in the future which is more of an indie album that you released in 2021 um it's a really great vibey piano based album that really showed off your vocal talents how'd you get from that into your latest work like what did you take notes from your last album into this 
Yeah, they're so different. That album, um, yeah, the album's called Let Go, Here in the Future. It was one of the, one of the singles on there. And uh, it's really an extension of my former band uh, called Return of Simple. Played in, this, um, created in college and then played it regionally and had some mild success. Um, but then, so a lot of these songs, those songs were written like, well, they started, were started a long time ago, like 2007, 8. Um, and then it just, Took a while to get that album out so i'll get band dissolved and eventually put it out as a solo album with other people playing on it so just getting that out was a huge step mm. you know, putting out an album is, is it's is hard a big hurdle it's a lot of work <laughs> really is. yeah so finally getting that out kind of like opened up the doors it's like okay now i can do this and uh, i could release music a lot more um so this project that was like really completely separate um I had been, I had done a bunch of like short films, score writing, a lot of like 48 hour film project stuff mm -hmm. where you have two days to make a movie. Mm -hmm. Short and, turnarounds. Yeah. And it was, it's great because you just, you end up with something. You've created something. You don't get, you can't get too perfectionistic about it. So that was a good lesson for me because up until then I'd always like, you know, you have time. So you use all the time and you try to make something perfect. And really that's not necessarily the best thing. Um, so, Two of those guys, uh, the two guys that I used to make movies with, came were part of this video game team. Two other, um, two other programmers, mm -hmm. and we got together for a similar thing called the Global Game Jam. We have two days to make a, a video game, and they asked me to write the music for that. I was like, cool. And then uh, we, we, I did one song, which is the Straight Light theme, mm -hmm. and then uh, the. We had this VR game in mind, like we all thought it was really cool, and decided let's really put it, some time into this and make this a real game. And then five years later, we're f finally releasing it, and uh, this is yeah my first opportunity to score a video game. And also kind of get you dived into the world of synthwave and retrowave. You said that you just recently discovered, right? That you just just found yourself in, in this community all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah, and I've started meeting people that. Like there's this, like really just past few months learning that there's this whole community, which seems really welcoming and really supportive, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, I guess the cl <laughs> the closest I knew, I guess my, my biggest um, awareness of like a synth wave or retro wave was like uh, local on the eights. Uh, oh, weather, like, yeah, weather the, channel. Yeah, the weather channel. <laughs> <laughs> that's some. That's some. Um nostalgic old school stuff right there i was one of those kids who, uh, who had you know just had basic basic stolen cable and that's all i watched was love your local on the ace just kept it on channel three because it was yeah. a quick flip if i wanted to put on my nintendo that yeah. same channel. <laughs> they, have some, they have some jams there's a yeah so um and and so for this game too, the the reason we went into it is I have I had a Prophet Five, which is an incredible synthesizer, mm -hmm. and uh, I've only kind of dabbled with it, never really used it too much. But when uh, we were making the game, we can hit different targets in in the game jam, and one of them was an '80s target, and mm -hmm. just kind of arbitrarily like, we want to shoot for the '80s target. I was like, all right, well I've got this '80s quintessential '80s synth, I'll use that. And that probably just came natural to you, right? Because just being a natural piano player, you just was able to quickly flip onto that? Or was there difficulties learning to, from you playing your grand piano into a synthesizer? Yeah, they're, they're pretty different. They're pretty different. I mean, the feel for one is different. And understanding, synth, learning synthesis mm -hmm. has nothing to do with piano. Really, and modular sounds, all. right? Yeah, yeah, and creating your own sounds and... and oscillators and LFOs and so a lot of that was uh I had, yeah still learning all that stuff but it's absolutely fascinating um and yeah and the synth itself is like very old so it's from the early 80s and yeah I have down a, a lot I have an old school Yamaha um 80s synthesizer but I'm I'm not as a frequent player as I used to but that was kind of like my dab into the synthesizers back in the day it's just like because I couldn't have I was a I was a kid of, a, of the early '90s, and so my grandparents always wanted me to play some kind of interest, um, some kind of instrument. And they kind of, my grandpa just gave me this old school Yamaha keyboard, 
that just happened to have a bunch of these modular synthesizer stuff on it, and that's how I got into it. And so oh, when wow. I first got into Synthwave and I noticed some of the similar sounds, I noticed there was a couple artists who used the exact same synthesizer in their music. That's kind of how... Which one? Um, I don't even know what the name of the model is. I'll get back to you on that one. It's just... Yeah, I'm curious. <laughs> I think it's like a B... I think it's a, the B159 Yamaha synthesizer. I think, it, I think that's what the model name is. I could be very okay. wrong. Um, but... Um, Let's get back into talking about Starry Light, which is this project that you've been going on for for five years, you said, right? Yeah, Stray Light. Yeah, five years. Stray Light, my bad. Starry Light. I don't know why I said Starry Light. Stray Light. You just re- re- switch the A and the R and it then becomes Starry Light. We've heard, <laughs> yeah, we, we mess it up too half the time. So, <laughs> so um, call, call this project right. took five years to make. So, it was, so and it's a VR game. Is it, it's, Yeah, VR only. So what? So what was the process of you making the music for a VR video game? Because that is very different on depth to field when it comes to playing on a playing experience type of type of way. So was did you play the game first and then came up with the with the music for it, or was it vice versa? Yeah, I'm part of the dev team, so there's five of us mm-hmm. all part of the team. So I helped create the game and, and help you know create karma be a part of conversations and um, but I didn't I don't do any of the coding or anything so my main role is the music and the sound effects and um, th- you, so I'll talk a little bit about the premise of the game you we've always kind of had this idea of like we want to make some sort of VR movement game and if you've ever done VR their movement in VR is an issue mm-hmm. it creates motion sickness for most people and us too so and there's reasons behind that like when you're brain sees something but you feel something else it goes so if you see yourself moving like you do in vr and your body isn't actually feeling the movement same thing like in a car you'll feel motion sickness um so we, we've there a lot of the point of this game was like how do we can we figure out a way to move without making people sick um so we figured out if you take away this floor and you take away the walls and the ceiling and anything that's like you know whizzing by you your brain kind of just interprets it like you're floating mm-hmm. and it's a very comfortable, motion sickness-free experience. So uh, in this game, it's mostly kind of like in this cosmic space. There is some gravity, and you just shoot your these beams to these anchor nodes, and you try to float and fly uh, through space mm-hmm. and, and then this abstract space world. So that's the premise of the game. It's a super fun experience. And so it's nothing like you've ever seen. It's nothing like you've ever felt. So musically, I wanted to try to create something that reflects that. It's a sound that you've never heard, music that you've never heard, that just mm-hmm. gives you the feeling like you are somewhere completely new. And it, it, it speaking of so- making something sounds very new, you also kind of hit the nodes of it, of making feel nostalgic. Like that was the one thing I didn't notice in, in listening to the album or getting a little sneak peek from it was that uh, it really does make you feel that you belong there that's something i i've definitely felt like watching um some of the clips that you posted like the video clips of the, of the game and then also listening to the full album and just like okay yeah it feels very feels good to be here <laughs> that's how I that's that. how i, I feel that. about that um so let's talk about your video game inspiration so yeah i mean me and you both love our video games um, and I mentioned before, I'm a child of like the 8-bit and 16-bit era of video games. You talk about like the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo. Um, what games were you playing that gave you these inspirations of these sounds or these? The, what kind of songs from certain video games? You did mention talking about Mega Man earlier. Was was there any other specific games that you take note from from to put into this album? Yeah, there's s- several specific ones. So. Just just eight bit music in general, Nintendo music in general. The limitations they had, they only had five channels to work with. Mm-hmm. One was a wave, like a sample ch- channel, which they both basically didn't ever use. The other one was just white noise and then three notes. Uh, they could use up to three notes. Um, and they could jam as many notes in those channels as they wanted, but um, only three at a time. So, like that limitation and that, like, um, I, could, I just got the sense that the early composers, like Mega Man 2 composer, Takashi Tateishi or David Wise or um, Hip Tanaka, 
they just i'm still listening like to they, david wise's albums to this day listening to like the original donkey kong albums <laughs> he's, yeah wait what a it's gorgeous mm-hmm. he's a brilliant uh brilliant composer um but i just got the sense that they were like they felt like they were on the cusp of something new they put a lot of passion into it and they didn't have any um precedent of what video game music should sound like because there wasn't any the closest was uh, that was they were coming up with it. Uh, there was computer games, which were just bleeps and bloops, and or Atari, Atari, was, yeah. And they're so limited, like 32 pitches max, like 32 total pitches that are logarithmic and not in tune. So it's like the fact that they even made Atari have <laughs> any sort of sense of melody is pretty impressive. So the Nintendo was pretty powerful, um, but um, I just got the sense that they were like. They took a lot of pride into it, and they're making something new. So I wanted to try to... So now, 40 years later, uh, we have music... You know, video game music kind of has a sound. It has like a... uh, It can be a lot more atmospheric. There's less um, emphasis on melody. Part of that is functional because you have more sounds to deal with. Mm -hmm. You have voices now, full video. um, uh, There isn't really much technical or technological restrictions like there was back then. Um, so it becomes kind of more movie score like. Yeah, it does. Um, Especially when you get into like some like like some of the newer style like 8-bit, 16-bit games or 32-bit games such as like, you know, you got like Shovel Knight or Meat Boy. Um, um, Celeste. Yeah, like those games that are yeah. completely like 8-bit style but they got like some new generated sounds that kind of makes it feel like it belongs in an 8-bit game but it doesn't because it has so many layers layers upon layers of a sound it's very interesting to see that's why i was always kind of curious of like um like was there any specific games that kind of just that just kind of put a little sprinkle of your own little thought into it yeah and those games like shovel knight and celeste those have great melodies and they don't have any really vocals to compete with so you can they can focus on melody so yeah the games that i was really inspired by were um metroid mm-hmm. the original metroid by hip tanaka um, specifically, he's, he, I read something he said at an interview where he said he at that, you know, at Metroid is one of the earliest video games there was. And he was already like rejecting video game music, like being too happy and like like the, like Super Mario Brothers. And like he wanted something darker. Mm-hmm. And uh, he also said like to him, the music of each level is the atmosphere of the level. Yeah, because there's so, not there's not a lot to go off in a Metro game because you're just wandering the world. And there's no like foley like we have now like in games there's or maps so like to him <laughs> yeah yeah so to him the music was this is the world the, the music is create the world is creating this music and i thought that was so cool and i took that same idea for stray light uh similar you're similarly we're in this dark place that doesn't really have any you're in the space so it doesn't really have any atmosphere there is some sound effects from some of the objects but there's i don't have anything to compete with so um Almost every level has its own music. And I wrote most of the songs for specific levels in mind with that with that concept. Like, what would this level, what does it make you feel? What does it sound like? Um, so that was one big inspiration. Another one was Marble Madness. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. Dude, I love that game. I love the soundtrack for that. Fascinating soundtrack. That is originally an arcade game. is written by Brad Fuller. And Hal Cannon, but I believe mostly Brad Fuller, who's uh, since passed away. Um, but that was one of the first arcade games to a use a trackball and also use a Yamaha DX7 chip sound chip. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Most of us know the game through the NES. I think that's what got it most. It was most popular. That's, that's how, how I, I remembered it. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And interestingly enough, David Wise worked at Rare, and he was the one who had to port the music. To the, oh. to the NES. So he made some changes too. It's really like there's some like melodic changes and he kind of made it um, darker sounding. That's so, very but interesting. This, that, I did not know that. Yeah, it, it is It is pretty wild. That whole soundtrack though just sounds like nothing else. And it's very abstract and bizarre. And you won't, you, you don't, you don't hear anything like it now. You never heard anything like it then. Like, But it was perfect for that game. Um, those are so. Those are two of my big inspirations. For awesome, this man! That, that's great to hear. I love. I love like diving deep and stuff like that, and like figuring out where some of these notes come from, and not saying that put me in a different thought space. 
So let's talk about your Twitch streaming. So uh, you are you have a very active uh, Twitch channel. Um, I was able to catch a last bit of your stream a few days ago, and I was like in full stalker mode, just going through all your stuff and just watching some of the past streams and hitting piatas and stuff like that. And <laughs> and yeah. congrats on the, on the 5,000 um, followers, man. If you haven't checked Thank it out, you. it's twitch.tv slash Rob Kovacs. Um, you were also at TwitchCon? Is that is that yeah. true? How I played how was at that? TwitchCon. How was I that? Perform. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Had an absolute blast. Um, uh, a just it's massive. So many people, huge displays. Um, but the best part was meeting just meeting so many people, meeting other streamers, meeting people from my community, from other communities, connecting with other Twitch musicians. The Twitch musician scene is also a really great and supportive music scene you know yeah. you have people of all different genres and all different talents and people who are you know anyone who streams I have a lot of respect for just because you're willing to put your, just to put yourself out there on camera is uh courageous and you know um you open yourself up to critique and ridicule and all kinds of stuff off from the internet so it takes a lot of courage to just put put a camera on your face um uh, so all of us on at twitch i guess have that uh mentality and uh, so it was great to be around like like-minded musicians and to be able to perform was amazing incredible um they have a, they had a small like music stage like near the top corner of the of the event but uh, outside it was beautiful in san diego and um well that's it is yeah awesome event um so i was gonna ask so i always i always try to ask different twitch streamers this kind of question uh, well, two two sets of questions. Um, what was like your most? I, I don't want to say weirdest, but what's your most fascinating interaction with a Twitch follower? Um, and um, what's like the most? I won't say sketchiest, but what's your most unique situation you ever had on Twitch so far, being a streamer? Well, f fascinating would be like I've met some. I've, Gained close friends from Twitch. So one of my uh, my mods, I, all my mods are absolutely inc incredible, and I've gotten close with uh, close with some of them. So like that's pretty fascinating to me. I'm just a stranger. We're both just strangers on the internet, and they see me, and then they want to stick around, and then want to like help and support and be very genuine. So that's fascinating and absolutely amazing to me. So nothing, um, so nothing has gone crazy like on on stream. Like I, I love watching some of your videos and, like, <laughs> you like it, just want to hit a piano with the with the gig with the, the giga tube. I was just like, yeah, oh, the giga tube. Oh right my there. god. <laughs> okay, I gotta ask, where did you get that from? Where where did you what where does one obtain a big old <laughs> um, cardboard roll up like that? So I have this green screen back here, which mm -hmm. changes pictures and um it was a painting it is a painting and we covered it up with a green screen so i originally bought like cardboard cut up paper or construction paper green paper but i got like the wrong color it was like a forest green i mean you need like a bright green mm -hmm. so uh, that's what i don't know that was the size it was way bigger than i needed but the, the next smaller size was too small so it, the paper came on that big tube and is it like super heavy because you, you use it's it to pretty hit heavy. a piata like I'm like, it's wow, that's heavy. like a baseball bat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, the pinata's back there. That's pretty beat up. I don't know if you can see it back there. Um, yeah, we have smaller tubes. Um, I don't know how the tube became a thing. I think just one. Yeah, it was like well, after Christmas, I had a, a wrapping paper uh, tube, and um, just as a joke, you can redeem channel points. And one of the channel points is you can redeem a tube solo. Which would be, you know, you play and then just something, do something stupid with the tube, have the tube play some notes and then you can treat it like it's a real person and soloist. And, and, you know, we have fun with that. Eventually, the tube disintegrated and got, you know, destroyed by just, you know, going too hard on the solos. But uh, we've gotten new tubes since. So now we have a little tube family. I, I, I saw the, the, the little emotes that you got with the, of the, of the tubes of, that you got on the, on the corner of your screen i was like wow they got like characters and they were really buff i'm like okay okay i i, I know he's got muscles on his forehead even that's on my one mod dts 4000 um 
he, <laughs> he took that upon himself to make that graphic. It was pretty, pretty great. I love it. I, I just love like unique uh, Twitch streams. And like I mentioned before, I was uh, talking to you how I've been watching some of your streams and I keep it in the background, like watching like so because I'm, you know, when I'm just working here at home, I, I have it on the background, just watching, checking it and just kind of listening to what you're playing and just hearing you conversate with your with your uh, Twitch followers. And it's just been awesome to see. I feel hey, really well, bad for my, for my like Twitch uh, Twitch followers because I have I have a few Twitch followers also, but oh. I, I rarely stream. Like it's like it's just ah. it's a habit I'm trying to get back into, but my, just life right now has just been chaotic. I haven't had a chance to. Have. What do you stream? Do you stream D DJ? Vari I'm a variety streamer, also a DJ, also. So yeah, so I'm just playing whatever, Game. hanging out. DJ. Yep. And then playing retro games, man. I I want to get, oh, I want to sit down and play some Mirror's Edge, man. That's why I want. That's I have a list of certain games uh, that I want to play on stream, and right now I want to try to tackle Mirror's Edge. But I'm glad that you have such an uh, awesome, dedicated um, uh, Twitch following. It's so awesome to see. Um, uh, one more. I'm gonna uh, follow you. I want to make him catch you on your stream. <laughs> when your, when I decide to stream, you have to text me. What's your Twitch name? It's Sinzone. Twitch.tv slash Sun Zone. Yep. Perfect. Uh, right. So, Rob, thank you for coming on the show. Your album, uh, Stray Light, original game soundtrack, uh, which was released on, which will be released on January 27th. By the time this interview comes out, it'll be already out. Um, it's be available on all streaming platforms. And so give it a listen. Rob, um, you have any last words, some socials, anything you want to talk about, man? You just want to put out there into the world? Yeah, please do listen to the soundtrack. It is the best music I've ever made. I'm so proud of it. Um, we have a vinyl campaign too, dark purple vinyl, which is running, I assume, while this, uh, probably still running while this uh, thing comes out. So if you want to get a vinyl and want to support the project and the music, please do. Um, otherwise, yeah, follow me on, you can find me on social media. It's mostly at, at Rob Kovacs Music um, or on Twitch at just Rob Kovacs. Awesome, man. All right. This is your host with the most, Razor, a.k.a. Mr. Blast from the Past, signing out with you guys. So have an awesome week. Thank you, Rob, for being on the show, man. Great. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for having me.